Did you listen to the full album or just the song? I, I couldn't take the whole album. No, well, you know, it took me an entire I did, day I to did write take it. The, I did take the song, but I didn't finish it because, listen, I watch, res- I watch wrestling all my life. And sometimes watching wrestling is enough mental torture than listening to a song. And who's did did Hulk sing that song? I don't think so. It didn't have enough like dudes and brothers and Jack. No. It. So I guess we're going to talk about Hulk right now. No, What's we're the not. Name we're of- not. We're not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to refuse to. to do it. We're going to. Uh, do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to talk about it now? Yes, I do. What was the name of the song? Hulk Hogan in, in yeah, heaven. Hulk, Hulk's, Hulk Hogan is not in heaven yet. Uh, Hulkster in heaven. Yes, that's it. Okay. So somebody said, listen to this. Because I thought it was a bunch of, you know, they are some things, or it's quite a few things, that I've never heard of in wrestling. And I had never heard of this album in my life, really. That tells you how successful it was. And it was probably put out in the what the eighties, early eighties. Oh no, I'm going to blow your mind. It was put out in 1995. Oh, later on. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's been out there a while, but I've never heard this. Now, allegedly, that Huck and Jimmy Hart wrote these songs while they were holed up in a in a hotel room waiting for their flights the next day, and then they got them produced. And I listened to the song, and I'm not going to give you my opinion of it. Are you going to give the viewers something to sample here? Would you like me to give you a dramatic uh, reading of the first verse? Yeah, and I want to hear it too. Mm. We can't play it. Why? Because it's it's, no. You got don't you have like don't you have like twenty seconds? No. If you play for a few seconds, they will. What is that called? Fair use. Technically, it's fair use. We would be able to review it, but the fact is that automatic content ID on YouTube would then revert all of the money from this show to Hulk Hogan's publishers. And we don't want to give Hulk all Hogan the, a penny. All the money. Yeah, genuinely. If, it, like, just 20 seconds, let's say, in a two-hour podcast, and you've got copyright material from, let's say, Hulk Hogan's song, it will say, uh, content ID has spotted this song in your podcast, and all the advertising revenue will now go to the publisher. Oh, it's ridiculous. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, and that's what I say, James. Listening to to us, most notably you, mm-hmm. it's like an educational experience. See, I didn't know that. Well, the thing is not, I didn't. not I, many people I, I do. Just thought, I, I just thought they suspended you for a while. No, because we do have the rights to use it, but then for whatever reason on YouTube's terms and services, they have the right to take all your advertising revenue and give it to someone as undeserving as Hulk Hogan for writing that piece of shit of a song. Let me give you the first verse here. Um, <clears throat> okay, go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear the words. I, uh, do you want me to do like a special voice? or? Well, you can. I read it in the papers, brother. I saw it on TV. <laughs> I guess there'll be one empty seat when I wrestle at Wembley. I used to tear my shirt, but now you've torn my heart. I knew you were a Hulkamaniac right from the very start. Brackets, right from the very start. I thank you. Oh, that was actually pretty good. Hmm. But anyway, I'm listening to it. I went, my God. And that was about the extent that I listened to the song. (laughs) I said, I I cannot punish myself anymore, and I'm not going to do it. I said, if anybody wants to hear this, they can go to, where do they find this? On YouTube? Yeah, in the darkest recesses of their subconscious, <laughs> you know, soon afterwards as well. Yeah, it is it's on the, YouTube. The Hulkster is in Heaven is the name of it. Hulkster in Heaven. Oh, my God. Okay, fans, if you really want to torture yourself, which I'm sure about 10 of you do, go to YouTube, Hulkster in Heaven, and listen to that song, and then you'll know exactly... Uh, the feelings of James and I. I uh, also would like to bring up a couple of things. I told you this just before we started that our video on Hulk Hogan's done about eighty thousand views or something in a week for this channel is a record. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, great. that's that's great. I mean, we've got some videos that have been watched more, but that's over the period of months or even a year. Excuse me. And uh, anyway, I had a look through the comments. A lot of them, you know, really enjoyed the video. A couple of people, I, right? So I want to bring up a couple of things. Uh, one of <laughs> one of the criticisms of our video is early on we mention that 
Hulk or Hulk Hogan said that it was him, Michael Jackson, and Mr. T. Now, this could be read one of two ways. The way that I read it and the way it sounded when I read it out, it sounds like all three of them were in Wembley looking at Make-A-Wish Kids, right? Smelling mm-hmm. smelling the Make-A-Wish Kids uh, because Hulk Hogan made wrote an entire paragraph or said an entire paragraph about how this supposedly uh, sick kid that he met really stunk. So, this, uh, so anyway, uh, but other people have said it may have been a slight misspeaking on Hulk's part because... It could have been that he was referring to only he and Michael Jackson and Mr. T were actually visiting sick kids at all of all the celebrities who've been asked to. Mm -hmm. And in fairness to Hulk Hogan, he has visited a lot of uh, Make-A-Wish kids over the years, and he's been great like that. The other thing is... um, Now, what have I written here? Hang on one second. So, uh, other people have been saying, well, he obviously meant Wembley... uh, whatever, uh, arena, because there's a Wembley arena. But in the quote, he says Wembley Stadium. He's very, very clearly saying Wembley Stadium. And then we get, you know, a usual, you know, the the window lickers, the morons, the, you know, tapping away on their jizz-encrusted keyboards, complaining about how we're so mean to Hulk Hogan. He's so much better than you. And it's like, you're just jealous of Hulk Hogan. I'm not jealous of Hulk Hogan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoever said that? Oh, I guess they don't remember. I don't remember. I guess they don't remember the... uh... Bubba the Love Spine incidents. Mm. 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 Now, what about that? And some of the racist incidents that he started. Plus, he got kicked off or out of WWE because of that. So I guess he's better than us. I suppose so. Yeah, he can be. I, I don't care. Yeah, I know. It's it's one of those things where, you know, like YouTube for the most part is actually very good with the comments, but you, you get the usual cesspool of just people trying to wind you up. And, um, or, you know, just can't fathom a, a world where Hulk Hogan isn't perfect. But having said <laughs> that, uh, was there anything else I wanted to make mention of? Uh, no, that's basically it. Um, but, you know, we may have to do like a, a weekly installment of Hulk Hogan's uh, bullshit just- story of the week. Yeah, just his yeah, just his sayings of the week. Plus, we can discount them. Or hey, I like this word fact check. We can fact check all this stuff. I guess I guess Hook is he hasn't heard of fact check, and very easy to check it. Is it just go on Google or whatever you want to go and and just check it. So, but anyway, he is what he is. Continue. Did you ever hear the story that Hulk Hogan actually wrote in his second book that one day he was flying back and forth from Japan so often that he was actually gaining days and he actually lived 400 (laughs) days in a year? Uh, uh, Rick Flair, he said that too. He was flying back to L.A. or Frisco somewhere, back and forth. And I I got sat down one day. I said, that's impossible. Because when you're going back, you're losing time. When you're going east toward Japan, you're gaining time. I don't get it. He said he 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 defended the title. I don't know how many times in two days. I think it was three. And it, that could that be possible? In three, if he goes, huh? Go on. What? In no, he say he def. Yeah, uh, three times in two days, but at at night. So that's three nights. Is that possible? Uh, e- even with the lost time and all this, he, he said he defended it in Tokyo, went to L.A. or San Francisco or somewhere, defended it, and then went back to Japan. No, you know how far not- it is from L- L.A. to Japan. It's like six thousand, five thousand miles anyway. Mm. What was it like a fourteen hour flight from the west coast or something? Well, that that varies too. I, I think I've made it once in eleven hours. It's a hellacious trip, let me tell you that. Mm, I know. A hellacious trip. And then for you to turn around uh, and to go back, that's another hell of a trip. Let me uh so let me, let me knowing read this Flair, here. he probably got hammered on the way over and wrestled his match and got back on the plane, got hammered on the way. He probably wrestled three days drunk and without any sleep. Do you think he just blacked out and just forgot a day? <laughs> Maybe. 
<laughs> I'm, let, but let me... I, I I love these things, but some of these guys, because when you get to thinking about it, you went, wait a minute. I don't know if he could have done that or not. So I, I'm going to check into that. But Well, here's, here's the quote. Here's the quote that Hulk Hogan says in his book. If I say I wrestled 400 days a year, it's no exaggeration. No exaggeration, Dutch. My years were actually longer than 365 days. There were times I'd <laughs> when I'd fly back and forth to Japan twice a week just to wrestle. Now, I actually looked this up, and at one point in 1982, he did do that. He flew to Japan and back twice in a week. I, he has done that at least once. Now, now it was nothing to wrestle in Madison Square Garden one day, then fly all the way to the Egg Dome in Tokyo the same day, because you'd gain 14 hours. So he'd gain 14 hours, but he'd sort of you know, not count the time that he was in the air actually getting there, and then fly back to the West Coast and so on. So I could wrestle in Japan today, then fly back across the international dateline and land in another town yesterday. I was constantly adding <laughs> days to my year. <laughs> hey, you can't make this up. But there is a... They, no, there is no, you can. A, I mean, Hulk Hogan just asked. Truth to, because when you pass that international dateline, you actually, you gain a day. I don't know. It confused me to think 